hate me. There's a Vinci. You know, see, I could Britney. Act a fishy. I have to kiss him. Salute, salute, salute. Top of the AM. Replicating for nigga face facts. Me packs. Top of the morning, top of the border, top of the border. It's your boy Big Fruit in the building. Yeah, I get my vibe. I get my I get I get my vibe on every morning with that God day. Every morning. Every morning. Faithfully. I had to cut it off at the end of Lil Wing verse where I ain't get my Jay-Z on early this morning. I did not get my Jay-Z on this morning. What's poppin'? Your boy back. Welcome to the real Big Fruit Podcast. Top of the AM, y'all know how I do. I get up early in the morning before I hit this road and I, and I record. Today I will be recording episode two of When I Fired That Shot. Episode two on the run. All right, episode one, I told y'all how things went down. The actual shooting itself. I explained to you some of the events that led up to the shooting as well so now i make it safely back to harrisburg pennsylvania and i'm on the run i'm out there like i'm out there with two of my homies from my hood they was already out there before me and stack a dollar rolled out there shout out to head and shout out to shorty you little kimmy those are homies from the hood those are homies from lg salutes they was already out there. So when me and Stack rolled out there, we stumbled on them niggas. So, you know, they rolled out the red carpet. They showed me and Stack the do's and don'ts. So we rocking with them out there, basically. So we rock. And they from the hood. They from the PJs, huh? So when the shot get fired, and I make my return back the next morning, they're well aware of what the fuck happened. You know what I'm saying? They're well aware of what the fuck happened phones, the streets, and then they're going to get it right from the horse's mouth. So when I get back, I tell these niggas what it is, what it ain't. They like, yo, what the fuck? I'm like, yo, man, like, you know, I'm wearing this mask. Like, I ain't bothered, but I'm telling you, son, I'm fucked up in the head. I ain't eating right. I ain't sleeping right. Because the place where I was staying with me and Stack was hustling, that's where we was resting our head. I'm on the run now. I can't stay there. So now, I'm crib hopping, hotel hopping, hustling at the same time, ain't saving a dime. Like, this shit is crazy. I say I was on, I lived like that on the run for about two and a half weeks. Incident happened on May 15th. I never forget, I got arrested on June 8th in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I never forget, it was a summer day we was out there hooping. Niggas was like, yo, let's go play some ball. I was like, ball, nigga, I can't focus on no basketball. I'm looking for the police, the homicide, the Texas, all that shit. Like, niggas was like, yo, let your guard down, man. Relax, we'll play some ball. All right, fuck it. I never forget, we went to the bar, we played some ball, we shook out. Everybody broke sweat, we went to the store to get something to drink. And as I'm coming out the fucking store, son. Now, I was, on the, I was well aware of the homicide detectives. And the narcotics. I knew who they were. And I figured if they was going to come for me, they was going to come in plain clothes. Man, I'm coming out that fucking little store. And two motherfucking police walk by. They walk by as soon as I was walking out the store, son. And I tried to stop in my tracks and let them walk past me. Them niggas double back. A car pulled up. I breezed on them niggas, son. I took the niggas on the road for their buddy. What was the buck? I had a pocket full of drugs, too. I'm running through Harrisburg, through back alleys, all types of shit. I don't know where the fuck I'm at, but I'm trying to get away. Whole time, I'm getting rid of drugs, because if they knock me, we ain't going to have no motherfucking extra case out here in Pennsylvania. So I get rid of the drugs. So when they knock me, boom, they bag me. 
back me coming out of an alley or some shit. I ain't have a chance. Man, police cars. You know what I'm saying? They knocked the nigga. Since the last time I got to play ball in Harrisburg, last time I got to see some of them dudes. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Solo. You know what I'm saying? He just got married. Congratulations. That's the last time I got to see the homie Solo, too. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. So they bags me and, um, you know, take me down to the little Harrisburg County Jail, all that bullshit. I was in the jail for maybe a week. Week or two. Two. I went to court. Yo, it's just me. Motherfuckers. All right, Wave Expedition, New York coming to get you. All right, cool, whatever. All right, never forget, I was in the Harrisburg joint, right? I was in the cell. Every cell is double bunk. You know what I'm saying? So they got a, they, they had a fucking special gallery for New York niggas. Because you got a whole bunch of New York niggas out there hustling, selling drugs, whatever, whatever. So when niggas was coming to the county jail, they was bickering with the Harrisburg niggas. So they was like, yo, we're going to separate New York niggas, put them in the same area by themselves. So all the New York niggas is in one wing. All the cells is double bunk. Niggas is 23 hour lockdown. Niggas come out one hour, you and your bunkie. Watch TV, use the phone, go back and fuck them. This shit was weird. Definitely deport me back to fucking room. Ex expedite me to you, whatever the fuck. Get me to New York. I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> so I'm in the cell, right? By myself for about a day or two. And across from me, two dudes is in the cell. Shit's crazy. So the dude across, he looking and shit, I'm looking. I hear him talking, I'm looking. So I calls the nigga. I'm like, yo, Isaac. <laughs> He's like, yo, who the fuck is that? Right across from each other. Now, I ain't seen Isaac. Man, this is my man, Isaac Smalls. From 325 Lafayette Gardens, LG, salute. 13th floor. Next door to Biz. Yeah, those my guys. Yeah, this nigga's LG born and raised. I'm like, Isaac. <laughs> like, what that fruit? Oh, shit, the fuck you doing out here? I'm like, the fuck you doing out here? Come to find out. I ain't seen Isaac since like 86, 87. <laughs> it's 92. I'm like, yo, what's up? Some the fuck you doing out here? He's like, yo, I was out here hustling. I caught a couple cases. I got to give these niggas some time. I'm like, well, I was like, yo, I was out here for about two months. Shit was looking real good. Went back to New York. I caught up some bullshit, man. Accidental shooting. Long story short. I don't know how this shit gonna play out. He like, whoa, I'm like, yeah, man. I'm waiting to go to New York. So we like, oh, all right, cool, small world. But it gets deeper. <laughs> I told you, I'm in the cell by myself. So the police come through. Yo, yo, barely, yo, what up? You getting a roommate today? Yeah, all right, whatever. I already know, nigga gotta be from New York. They don't put niggas in these cells unless you're from New York. But at the same time, you know, New York, or New York niggas on a different type of time. <sighs> All right, bring the nigga in. They bring me a fucking bunkie, sell me. Cell open. And walks the nigga from home. <laughs> my shun. I call him up on the low. That's my shun. I call him up on the low. The nigga walked in the cell. He was like, fruit. I was like, oh, shit. Now, we in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, son. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He like, yo, what the fuck you doing out here? I'm like, yo, I came out here hustling to get some money. No, so he short. New York, man. What the fuck you doing here? He like, yo, you remember when we was in the sixth building? I kid you not, son. This nigga used to tell me in C76917 every day. Damn, when this shit is over, I got to go back to Pennsylvania. So I'm like, you got a case of Pennsylvania? He's like, yeah, some bullshit. A sale. I was like, word. Here it is a year and a half later. We in the fucking cell again. No, two years later. Nah, a year. Because we was 9-1 summer. 9-1 summer. 9-1 summer, six billion. 9-2 summer, we in this fucking cage in Harrisburg. So a year later. So what the fuck? He like, yeah, man, I got to give these niggas some time. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, man, I'm going back to New York. I'm taking my show on the road. Long story short, the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania County Jail was a breeze for me. Punk ass, two and a half, three weeks the most. Ain't no shoot him up, bang, bang, stab him. None of that crazy shit going on. So y'all ain't gonna get none of that. So now, we get back to uh, New York. Going through the process, you know what I'm saying? I understand what it is. 
since you booked it, I understand what it is. Get the rack of salad. We're going through it. Now, now, now shit's sinking in. Like, what the fuck? All right. Did I see a judge before going to rack of salad? I don't remember. I don't remember if I went through Central Booking and saw a judge, or did I go through Central Booking and straight to rack of salad? I can't remember. But I know this is when this shit start to sink in, like this shit is real. I know when I get the rack of salad. Rather, on my bus ride, on the ride to rack of salad. This is what's processing in my mind. I already know what it is. I know what kind of case I got. I know how it happened. And ain't nothing I could do about it. But at the same time, I got to think like this now. This beef is real. That just popped off in the hood. I took somebody's life. She got two older brothers in the system. A baby father in the system. And I got a cousin running around the system who had a baby by this young woman. Who I really can't say what type of time this nigga gonna be on. I'm keeping it 100 with you. You understand what I'm saying? They say blood thicker than water, bro. But that shit ain't thicker than cum, son. You feel what I'm saying? So I got a cousin on Rack of Shannon who I don't know what type of time this nigga gonna be on. I'm just being real with you. This is all going through my fucking head, son. 17 years old, kid. 17 years old. They don't make them like this, son. So I'm like, yo, you know what? Fuck it. If anybody, I'm talking about Lakeisha, Lakeisha Shondell May, may you rest in peace. I hate to have to talk like this, but it's real. This is real, son. I'm at, now I'm telling myself, when it comes to my victim, her two older brothers, and her baby father, if they have any doubts, any concerns, or wonders, what's up with this nigga fruit? I'm going to set the tone right now. This is what the fuck I'm thinking, son. I'm going to set the tone right now here on Rack and Shaman. So by the time I get up north to do this motherfucking time, motherfuckers won't understand what it is. We ain't playing with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting messages. Niggas is asking questions. Niggas is sending indirect threats. Okay. Game set. It's lit. This is where the C70 fruit ever begins. But we're going to get to that in another episode. Rather, another series. Excuse me. We're going to get to the C70 fruit series on another, uh, at another time, another video. This one here, this is where the C70 fruit shit begins. Because I gotta set I gotta set the stage, huh? You understand what I'm saying? Now I'm getting back to Seattle, it's adolescent shit. Last time I was in the building, there was a bunch of Brooklyn Bronx shit going on. Alright. I adapted that shit. That's nothing. Um, but now I gotta deal with yo. Niggas is gonna wonder what the fuck happened. Niggas is gonna be talking. Okay, I might have to hurt somebody behind this shit. Unbeknownst to me, son, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I hit that full building. Keep it 100 with you. I hit that full building. And it was only one motherfucker. Who made it his business to make sure to check for me? I think I was in Mar 6, New Jack House, some stupid shit. One nigga to check for me as soon as I hit the building. 
Salutes. Shout out to the big homie Mo Dog. I hit the full building. I'm in the receiver room. They can see somebody must have saw me. Yo, fruit in the building. That shit got down tomorrow. They dog heard about it. Yo, ooh, wah, ah, ooh. Within 24 hours, I'm in law library with Mo Dog. Yo, what the fuck happened, son? Talk to me. I get more dope to run down, boom, 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 this is what it is, this is what it ain't, son. All right, cool. So immediately, dog like, listen, it is what it is. Now it's time, Lord Lie, baby. <laughs> so I'm going through the motions with the Lord Lie, baby, shit, dog telling me what to do, what not to do. I'm expecting him to give me a little tutelage on this shit. Turned around, dog was gone, son. But then my first week on Rack Salad, first two weeks, dog was gone. Dog took his show on the road up north. Main 02, they went up north. It's cold to finish. I think I saw Main 01 time walk through the hallway in his handcuffs. Because him and OP, rest in peace, OP, him and Main 0 popped off on the police. So they had Main 0 handcuff order. I saw Main 0 one time walk through the corridor going into one main bing. I was coming out of the Lord Library one morning. He ain't see me. Dog was like, yo, they go, Main, you coming out of the Lord Library. Main walked past. He ain't see me. He might have saw a dog, I don't know, but he definitely didn't see me. And like I said, I turned around, dog was gone. So me being young, 17, back on this track sound shit, I'm gonna keep it one with you, son. I ain't throwing myself into the law live, baby. And me gonna get back to that. Immediately I went off and running with this four building shit. Being big fruit. Wearing a mask. Not dealing with that shit eternally, son. Like, I was fucked up off of my crime. You know what I'm saying? I'm calling home. Checking the temperature. Remember, she had just birthed a newborn baby into my family. And that baby was being raised in my household. You know what I'm saying? When that shit went down, when that shit went left, that baby spent a whole lot of time in my household. Absolutely, son. So now I'm calling home and it's not the same. Like, yo, <laughs> it's not the same, bro. The only person who I felt I could talk to at that time from Raggy Sound back home. Shout out to my Uncle Timothy, my Uncle Fifi. If you from LG, them front builders, you knew who my Uncle Fifi was. I had an older uncle who grew up, suffered from epilepsy. Like if I would call home and he was home for the weekend. See, nobody in my family know this, bro. I'm expressing this shit here on YouTube for the first time. I would call. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I would call home. He happened to be home for the weekend because he, he stayed in Long Island at an epilepsy house. If I happen to call home and he's there, he's he was the only person in my household, son, who I was able to take a deep breath and be little ass Fuquan, man. Real talk. And be little ass Fuquan, the little boy. Who just needed a hug, bro. On some G shit. Like, I will, he was the only person, man, that I felt comfortable with. Like, that shit, that shit changed my life. And I was dealing with that shit early, son. Like, I'm sitting here getting emotional. <laughs> and I'm crying on fucking YouTube, son. I'm crying on fucking YouTube. Ain't that some shit? This shit's bogged out. But yeah, like my uncle, he was the only person, son, who I felt comfortable with. Because he didn't have no understanding of what the fuck was going on. Like I told you, he suffered from epilepsy. He ain't know about none of that shit that was going on. And I ain't have to talk about it when I was on the phone with him. Every other person I would speak to, we had to touch on that shit some way, somehow. And it was a big fucking question mark. 
anybody who wasn't there, anybody who didn't see what happened, anybody who didn't know what the fuck was going on behind the scenes with the bickering of Grand Avenue and LG, if you wasn't abreast of none of that shit, son, it was a question mark on my head. Yo, that nigga did what? Yeah, son, so, I, yo, I was going through it, bro. I'm not here to minimize or de-escalate my behavior, my action. Nah, I ain't doing that, bro. I took my friend's life. I am so sorry. I am so remorseful. Like, when you live, listen, man, this is my message to y'all little niggas right now. When you out there in them fucking streets and you live in a certain lifestyle, shit can go left in a New York minute. Anything can happen, bro. Your life and your freedom is always questionable. Nothing is guaranteed in them fucking streets and them streets don't love nobody. Straight jacket. So y'all motherfuckers out there, y'all got a decision to make. Real talk. You understand what I'm saying? So, I'm not de-escalating my behavior. I'm not minimizing my actions. I've, I fucked up. I made a life-altering decision when I left that fucking apartment with that gun. Period. That's where we begin. You know what I'm saying? I made a life-altering decision when I left that crib with that gun. You know what I mean? But uh, getting back to this racket challenge shit, I'm going through the practice. You know, I'm going through all that shit on racket challenge, so I'm not no lie, baby. I'm C74, how this shit going down. But like I said, unbeknownst to me, man, dog was the only one who I had to express that shit, man. And I was off and running to the, in the full building doing what I do, and... Niggas wasn't whispering about that shit. I never had niggas whispering about my crime in C74. Niggas wasn't questioning it. Niggas wasn't whispering about it. I don't know. Maybe because of who I was. I don't know. But it was never an issue. So today to be on YouTube and, and have niggas yo, question it, it's bugged out to me because... I did damn near 23 years incarceration and never had to explain my motherfucking self. You dig what I'm saying? It, behind the wall, in the prison system. Never. I come to society, free man now. <laughs> I fucking expose or, uh, 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 yeah, expose myself to YouTube, to the world. Now I got to explain this shit, but it's all good. I ain't complaining. You know what I'm saying? Shit is real. It's a movie. Y'all want it, I'm going to give it to you. So now, nobody talking about my case, none of that shit. I'm off and running, doing the back and sound and shit. C70 through, ah, ooh, ooh. But mentally, sir, I'm, I'm damaged, bro. Niggas is in the hood. They still bickering with Grand Avenue. Other shit going on. Other than the shot I fired, it's just crazy. LG and Grand Ave is going crazy. The initial shot that I fired created a tension between LG and Grand Avenue. And Grand Avenue didn't have to be involved with this shit, son. We all know homegirl from our hood. She's creeping over there, fucking with this nigga on Grand Ave. Behind a nigga back in LG that she was supposed to be with. We all knew that shit is going down. It's some tension here now. And it shouldn't have been. And I'm going to tell you why it shouldn't have been. I fired the shot. I take full responsibility for that shit. But I just told you. Me and my cousin Sad was dating two sisters. Him and his girl had a baby. I'm still with the other sister. We fucking family, son. You understand what I'm saying to you? This is our family. However motherfuckers want to look at it and think about it. Oh, shit. Yeah, we family. So... Not only was this some LG shit, but this was a family issue. Think about what the fuck I'm saying to you, son. That was my girl's sister. That was my cousin's girl. 
my cousin's baby mother, my little cousin's mother. This is a family issue. So if you personally ask me, them Grand Avenue niggas, them niggas who spoke the, them niggas spoke the fall back, son, and them niggas didn't. And that's why this shit is personal with me, man. Okay, I need y'all to understand that. So now that shit going crazy in LG Grand Ave. I'm on Rack Sound doing what I do. Long story short, I I ain't never denied the fact that I was the person that did the crime. I ain't walking no courtroom. Yo, I ain't do it. Yo, it ain't me. None of that. All I asked was, yo, tell the fucking truth, son, because they got me charged with murder. You feel what I'm saying to you? I ain't murder nobody. So actually the new shooting, son. You're gonna let these niggas bury me? So that's my word to the streets. Like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, nah, nah, they gonna go down like that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, but a homegirl making all these different statements against me, son. It seems like she's going from this statement to this statement. Like she's getting worse. Like, you know what I'm saying? She's painting a different picture every time she speaks. Somebody's coaching her. Seems like the prosecutor's really trying to get a murder conviction. What the fuck is going on, son? Either we're going to tell the truth or we're not going to... Well, what's up? That was my position for the whole time on Racket Sound. All right, now. The boy from Grand Avenue get pinched. He get knocked off for some serious shit. You know, he an adult, so he in another building. Brooklyn House, I don't know where the fuck he at. But he got some serious shit on his head. And he in a position like me. He hitting the streets, yo, ooh, ah. He trying to make sure motherfuckers don't bury him under the jail. Can't be mad at me for doing the same thing. Right? Okay. i never forget. We was in 360 Supreme, court pins. Me, next Squeak from Four Green, couple other straggler niggas. Adolescent pin. We in the pen, smoking weed, bugging out, waiting to see the judge. Dope niggas start loading up, coming from different buildings. Nigga pretty black, Dre, Coney Island, Brooklyn, salute. He pulled up, check it, and he had the first child by the ch the, the, the chick from my project school. All this shit kind of like blew up over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's her first baby father. And me and homie like family. Our mothers grew up together. You know what I'm saying? Our grandmothers hung out together. So we say we family. You know what I'm saying? So Dre pull up. Oh, shit, your food up. Yeah, what's good? Bush out of LG, he pull up. And homeboy from Grand Ave pull up. So everybody knows tension. Like, oh, shit. Me and him in the same area. And at this time, I'm bugging on Ragged Sound. When I say bugging, I mean I'm bugging. Immediately, the oh, everybody in the bullpen gripped up. Yo, what's up, fool? Who that nigga? Real talk. And Squeak know I'm telling the truth. Because this is when Squeak ain't no homie off Grand Ave. Everybody gripped up your food. What's up? What's up with the nigga? Nah, chill. Hold on. Let me see what's up. Let me talk to this nigga. Show up. <laughs> the police funny. They was like, yo, fruit. We gonna let him out. Let him come down here and talk to you. We ain't letting you out. <laughs> let you out. You get to run the man acting stupid. No. All right, cool. Let him out. Let him come talk to you. They let him out. He comes to the bullpen, son. Yo, what's up? What's good? Yo, yeah, I got some shit going on. I'm trying to get around. Ah, I'm like, I right, won't. Well, good luck. I hope shit work out for you. But what's up with me? You know, um, homegirl is the witness against me. Like, and she going crazy. Like, I'm not. Like, she ain't even coming up in this motherfucker telling the truth. She up in there. Like, she made three different statements from since the night of the, the shooting. Like, on the scene, it was one statement. At the grand jury, it was a different statement. Like, was she going to change it at the trial? Like, what's up? Like, she's trying to help the DA bury me, son. Nah, son, we ain't doing that. This is his position. And I need the world to know this shit. 
Nah, son, we ain't. And squeak, you know I'm telling the truth. Nah, we ain't doing that shit. Ah. Then he dropped this one on me. I just married her. She ain't getting on no stand under my last name. You know what that shit felt like? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. I could breathe. This shit gonna work out. One, if she don't cooperate, they might have to realize we have to offer him something other than 15 to life for murder. This is what I'm hoping. Okay, they ain't got no witness. The case getting weak. They ain't gonna let me go. That's the furthest thing from my mind. Maybe they're gonna have to come to their senses and say, you know what? It was an accident. It is a manslaughter. Let's give him a plea bargain. That's all I want out of this shit, son. So when he told me, yo, I'm mad with her. She ain't getting on no stand under my last name. I was good. He go back to the bullpen. I'm in the adolescent pen chilling. And I'll never forget. Dre came to talk to me. Yo, what's up? What's poppin'? I'm like, yo, what's good? Uh, he was like, man. Only way you get home fruit. <laughs> if somebody put that broad in, the, in a car. Like, that's how he talk. Because this is his baby mother. Like, they, they got beef. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, so we ain't doing that. He like, yeah, man. I'm not, I'm saying, like, yo, son, I ain't trying to go home. Like, so we, me and him, we personal with him. So we can laugh and joke like that. I'm like, yo, I ain't trying to go home, son. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm willing to cop up, but not to murder. They bugging. They acting like a nigga do, do, do clip. clip. And, and, nah, son, we ain't doing that. I ain't taking no 15 to life for murder. And them niggas keep playing with me at parole balls because I murdered a woman. No, 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 no. We not doing that. So, Dre break out. The motherfucker Bush come down. Squeak, you know I'm telling the truth. Bush come down to the pen. Yo, what up? It was popping. Uh, and he said, he only asked me one fucking thing, son. Because he didn't do too much talking. He did a lot of listening. But he did ask me one question. He said, do you trust him? That's the only thing Bush asked me. Do you trust him? I'm, I'm 18 now. Yeah. Because in June, before I, I turned 18 before I hit the full building. 18-year-old kid. Running around right shouting. I ain't thinking clearly. I'm emotionally scarred. And I told Bush straight up. I said, yo, I ain't got no choice, man. He was like, all right. So I'm back in C-74, ripping, running, doing what I'm doing because this shit gonna work out for me. He told me that. This nigga of grand aunt who's married to my witness told me that. So now I'm on Max Allen. The homie Shoe Shine come through. You know, he had affiliation with Rab off Grand Ave and shit. So, me and Shoe get to talking. You know, little niggas in LG. Ah, you gonna kill them niggas. <laughs> but fuck that. We get to talking. We get personal. You know what I'm saying? See, when I mention Shoe Shine and Mo Dog, everybody say, yo, ah. I, I, I need y'all to understand, man. I'm younger than them dudes. I look up to those dudes. I don't give a fuck all the stories you heard about Big Fruit. Big Fruit this, Big Fruit that. I respect my elders, bro. I know where I come from. And that's a lot of you young niggas probably. Y'all don't respect your elders and y'all don't know where you come from. I know where I come from. So when you hear me speak of Mo Dog and Shoe Shine in a, in, a, in a certain light, it's because those niggas is my big bros. Real talk. So now, Shoeshine, dog is gone, Shoeshine is here. 
And me and Shu get in debt with this shit. And Shu used to tell me shit like, yo, bro, you got to understand this. He made a lot of sense when he was telling me like, yo, listen. Homie saying he going to do one thing. If he gave you his word, he's supposed to deliver. Period. It ain't no going back on that. That's all we got is our balls and our word. He gave you his word. He's supposed to deliver. He said, but at the same time, you got to remember. That was her sister. A lot of emotions is involved. I'm like, yeah, I understand that. And I don't expect her to not <laughs> come to court. I'm prepared for that. I'm just not prepared for the bullshit. I'm not prepared for the lies. I'm not prepared for the extra extracurriculum cooperation with prosecutors because you got open cases and you making deals. I ain't with all that shit, son. Cause I know what I know what I'm dealing with here. We all know what the fuck we're dealing with here. So shoot like that's understandable. That's understandable. But if he made the promise that he ain't even gonna let her get on the stand, that's even better. Let me walk free, pick up my hammer, and we take it from there. Straight jacket. That's my way of thinking. Uh, but if she got to come to court, you and I got to sit down, I'm ready to sit down. I ain't running from this shit. But I ain't going out like no suckers. They ain't just going to drag me in the courts. They ain't just going to lose me in the system. They ain't going to do that shit, son. Because homegirl trying to get around a case uh, that she got. So, fuck it. I'm going to say whatever the prosecutor want me to say to get a murder conviction and bury this nigga. Nah, we ain't doing that. That was my main fight and my main concern while I was laying up in the joint. So, shoot, like, all right, that's understandable. Time goes by. Homeboy from Grand Ave, he rolled out. He get around this situation. I guess those phone calls he was making and... Putting pressure down and making sure motherfuckers don't come to court. It worked for him. Why I can't do the same thing now? You understand know what I'm saying? Because that's what the fuck I'm trying to do. So he gets out. I'm still laid up. As a matter of fact, the whole crew laid up at this time. Peter Russo bail out. He out there with his head cut off. He out there by himself. Homie popped. Nigga from Grand Ass Pop, Peter Russo. Yeah, man. Yeah. He pops Peter Russo. Paralyzes. Everybody watched the nigga do it. Everybody knew the nigga did it. Peter Russo didn't say nothing. He ain't say nothing. I take control of the situation. Favor for favor. You heard what Maine and Murder said. Favor for favor. I take the will. P. Rusto, you good? You're on power line? Ah, listen, I love you, but I need you to keep your motherfucking mouth shut. Yo, ooh, ooh, ah, nah, nigga. That nigga, in the, that, nigga in the, that nigga in control of my situation right now. So he's sick. Peter Russo like, all right, whatever you want. So Peter Russo, I got him on lock and kick. So now I'm chasing this nigga down. Yo, listen, what's up, bro? Yo, listen, fuck that you. What's up? Yo, I don't even want to talk about no LG and Grand Ave shit. I just want to know what's going on. You pop this nigga. I'm keeping this nigga mouth shut. What we doing for me? Oh, nah, you good. I ain't, you, ooh, ooh, I ain't letting her testify. Ah, word. I'm thinking she coming, son. And I'm going to be able to do what I do and walk out with a fucking manslaughter conviction. He telling me she ain't coming. Word. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, this nigga feeling himself. He out there busting his gun. He done put Peter Rab down. Oh, this nigga waiting for put me down when I come home. Fuck it. It's lit. I live for this shit. He telling me she ain't come to court. Yo, son, I'm gonna. I ain't low library, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I don't know nothing. Trial time, cut. 
I just know I'm going home. <laughs> Whole projects, half the projects in the courtroom. And in comes the witness. My motherfucking heart drop. I said, what happened? Now, I'm not mad that she's here, bro. Nah. I'm saying to myself, what happened? You popped my man. I kept his mouth shut. Why is she here? That shit fucked me up. So now, I had to snap out of that shit and deal with the trap. Whole project, like I said, half the projects in the courtroom. Some of them was out there that night. Some of them heard the stories. Some of them heard the rumors. But ain't none of them hear this shit when she got on the stand. That's my beef. When she got on the stand, man, she told those people and LG that she watched me load the weapon. Put a bullet in the chamber. And point the gun at her sister. And then shot her. That was her trial testimony, my nigga. And the whole project sat there like this. I kid you not. Her and the prosecutor try to bury me, son. And I'm... And motherfuckers wonder why I conducted myself the way I did. This is all the anger, confusion, hostility, like frustrating. All that was C-70 fruit. Big fruit. Big fruit in the weight pal. The greatest show on the earth in the weight pal. All that shit was from this case, bro. They, they drove me crazy, son. The only thing I didn't do was take meds and kill myself. Real talk, son. They, yo, this is what they did. So, you know, being that I'm on trial, suicide, every story. Prosecutor got that shit off. Me and my fraternity, we did what we had to do. The jury ain't jack a lot of shit. I ended up beating some uh, 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 assault charge. I ended up beating the champion with a witness charge. That's why the whole crew was on the island. You know what I'm saying? They said the crew... Threatens the witness If they testify against me They was gonna kill the witness Yeah that's why the whole crew came to jet And that shit never happened my nigga That shit never happened That was some setup shit Whole crew came to jail They took my phone calls Yo you can't call nobody Like yeah I went through a whole bunch of shit On Ragged Sound behind my kids And my crew So now when my crew was locked up For tampering with a witness I had the charge too Yeah yeah, shit got thick in LG, son. It is truly a movie. It is truly a fucking movie. So now, I beat that charge. Tampering with a witness. Uh, 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 uh. I beat assault. And I got convicted of manslaughter. They didn't come back with a murder. So evidently, they didn't believe her. When she said, yo, he put the bullet in there. They didn't believe that shit. You know what I'm saying? But they tried it, son. That's what they tried to do to me, bro. And that wasn't cool. So now, I get sentenced, asshole full of time, for the man sort the of conviction, they gave me a 12 and a half to 25. They ran concurrent, consecutive, they ran consecutive in assault, three and a half to seven, made my sentence 16 to 32. My minimum was 16, my max was 32. I ended up doing 23 years out the bit. So now, after sentencing, 
I'll take my stroll on the road. But before, I'm going to back it up a little bit because I know I said some shit. They might like, oh, shit. I'm going to back it up. When I was on Racket Shallon, right, I was the only one on the crew on the island for my case. I told you, one day I walked in the motherfucking receiving room for court and my whole crew was in the bullpen. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck y'all niggas locked up for? They like, yo, your witness told the police. We backed her down in the exit and told her she testified that she was going to kill her. We ain't do that. Police ran up in the crib on a hot pursuit for tampering with a witness. We had to throw drugs and guns out the window. So the whole crew that was in the crib and all that, everybody locked up for this shit. I go to court. And when I get in front of the judge, shut if I'm lying or flying. I got in front of the judge. The prosecutor said, Your Honor, we ran through Lafayette Gardens Project to lock up the Hardy Boys tampering with a witness in this case. Ah, ah, ah. And we got new evidence to charge Mr. Bailey with the tampering with a witness. And I'm like, I'm fucked up. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck you talking about? My mother in the courtroom, son. This is where I really got really rest her soul for Queen. I love you, mommy. This is where I really got crazy. The judge lectured my mama. Miss Bailey, I'm letting you know right now if any witness tampering is going on, you will go to jail. I'm like, yo, what the fuck you talking my mother like that for? She don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know what's going on. What the fuck is going on? So my lawyer, like, yo, they, they charging you with the same charge. With, with those guys with the tampering with the witness shit. Like, I'm their co-defendant and shit. Like, what the fuck? Evidently, oh, yo, it's, it was crazy. The payphone rung. It was the witness, and I threatened them. And, and, and y'all charging me with that shit? Like, they just made that shit up? Yeah, this is what's going on. So this shit getting crazy. So the whole crew locked up. Now, when I get back to back and shot, no, before I leave the courtroom, after the judge said what he said to my mama, yeah, you'll go to jail any witness champion. The fucking prosecutor says, I would like to terminate all his phone calls while he's on racket sound. And the judge agreed. My nigga. I'm going through it. I ain't did nothing but try to do my time and fight my case. I ain't Threatening the witnesses. I ain't tell nobody threatening no witnesses. Like, this shit is bugging me out. Man, I got back to Rag and Salad. I got a new floor card. So the police, all the police, they know what it is. This she sent me fruit. Them niggas like, yo, what the fuck? They like, yo, you can't get on the phone. I was in population. I was in four upper. They was like, yo, how this shit gonna work? I was like, yo, chill, keep that shit on the low. Right now, I need to run down to Mar Six and see my whole crew. They came through this morning, New Jacks. They down there. I got to make sure they right. Plus, I got to talk to these niggas. Police like, all right. So he called my house. Yo, I'm sending Bailey back. There's some shit going on. Make sure y'all talk to him. Give me y'all air. Oh, oh, oh. He need to make a run to six low, six, Mar Six to go see his people. So the police and four up on point. I get up there. I come back from court. I'm bugging, son. I can't even think straight. And he's just like, yo, what's I have in court? I don't know what the fuck happened in court. So I tell the police, yo, I need to go to Ron Six. They like, yo, we already know. So they told Ron Mac, salute Ron Mac from Bronx. They told Ron Mac, yo, roll with fruit. So me and fruit, me and Ron Mac roll out. We run out of Ron Six, regulate that shit. Yo, what up? Ah, dead the phones. My whole crew down here. Make sure the niggas is good. And now I'm getting the breakdown and the rundown was happening. What the fuck happened? They tell me what happened. I go back to four with the police, like, yo. You better make all your phone calls tonight because tomorrow morning, this shit going to be in full effect. All right, cool. I burned the jack down that night. Shh, 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 shh. Next morning. I'm in population, my nigga. <laughs> Next morning. Niggas come. Uh, Barely. Pack up. Fuck you mean pack up? Yo, listen, this phone restriction shit, we can't watch you in population. So we got to admin send you. Fucked my bed up with this shit. Man, I ain't going no motherfucking way. Ah, fuck out of here. Call the squad. They called the squad. <laughs> Dragged my ass up out of here. Gave me a ticket for refusing. That gave me bang time. I never seen population again after I whipped that, that uh, captain ass. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's how that shit played out, son. Like, I went through it. Like, they wasn't playing fair back in LG. 
I was suffering while I was doing that time, son. But it's a small thing. I'm not complaining. I'm just giving y'all what the fuck, the facts. I'm giving y'all the facts. Ain't none of this shit cap. So now, after I get sentenced to the 16 and 32, I more or less got to get ready to go up north. And like I said, oh, let me back it up a bit. While on Rack and Shadow, I ran into my cousin. He had a baby by her. Like I said, man, blood thicker than water, but it ain't thicker than cum. So me and him had to talk. And he let me know what it was. You know what I'm saying? That's family. It's an accident. He know what it is. He, he know what it was with me and his baby mother. He know that was my sister. He know I didn't do no shit like that on purpose. We lived in the same apartment together. <laughs> like, he know what it is. I was appreciative and grateful for that. But when I took my show on the road, I remember, like I told you, she had two older brothers, and I had this nigga starved no running his mouth. So, I'm going to end it right here, my part two, of when I fired that shot, the incarceration of Fuquan, on the run. This is part two, and I'm ending it. Stay tuned for part three. When I fired that shot, the incarceration of Fuquan, part three will be called Taking My Ride Up North. Yeah, part three, Taking My Ride Up Top. Okay? So y'all stay tuned and wait for that, man. And I don't want y'all niggas laughing at me in the comments about crying, man. To my, oh, men don't cry. Yeah, man, that was the motherfucking problem, man. I needed to do a whole lot of crying and I didn't. And that. That shit didn't help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to beat up out of here and I'm going to drop this video right now, man. Salutes.